Christmas Eve, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Three and Out College Edition, right here on iSports Radio, you can directly for all that is sports, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the thick of bowl season, well I can't necessarily say the thick, because we're getting close to it, but we're not in the thick just yet. So many good games the last couple of days since Taryn and I have, but uh, we're on with you. And well, we're going to be recapping those and reviewing what is next craziness, man. One bowl game canceled, so no Hawaii Bowl today. Texas A&M will drop from a bowl, but Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights, will fill in. And well... Some crazy scores and some teams that we thought and maybe didn't think would win so far in bowl season. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been madness. And well, this is the closest we ever get to December madness. You know, football style it is. March madness football style, but December madness. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, get ready, get set. Because here we come. Talking bowl season. Once again, right here on 3 and Outs. College edition, regular and high sports radio, your directly for all that is sports. Welcome, 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 football fans. Well, here we go, man. It has been chaos <laughs> in every facet, I'm sure, for a lot of you out there. You last-minute shoppers, hopefully some of you are tuned in right now. Maybe you are last-minute shopping and running around, depending on where you are, of course, in the country. If it's later on, in the, well, if you're on the East Coast, it's you know getting close to noon. And if you're on the West Coast, well, you're probably just waking up, or you might be on the go. I don't know. It's a big possibility you might be up and ready and rolling because, well, tomorrow is, you know, kind of, you know, an important day. Christmas, of course. So, uh, any last-minute shoppers out there, we are happy to fill your ears with our talk on college football. So, we thank you so very much for tuning in. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, he, of course, is... COO, one of the COOs of IE Sports Radio. He is founder and co-host of, oh, sorry, founder and host of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show here on IE Sports Radio, talking all things SoCal Sports. He is founder and host of Set Point, talking all things volleyball here on IE Sports Radio. He is co-host of this show, Three Not Calls Edition. And he is the head of our PR department. The guy is, he wears so many hats in this organization we got here at IA Sports Radio. I mean, literally. The, the, the guy wears so many dang hats. He could own his own store. Ladies and gentlemen, glad to have him here today to talk some college football. Welcome in, the one, the only, Mr. Taron Rodriguez. What's going on, brother? How you doing today, man? Hey, Larry B. It is great to talk college football as always. We're ready to get back at it on Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas Eve to everybody. And let's do the dang thing. I am with that, and Merry Christmas Eve to you and your family as well, Taryn. It has been a uh, wonderful last couple of days, and well, the last time we talked was on Monday, on the 20th. We were scheduled to go live yesterday, but of course, Mr. Late Larry B. over here, uh, we uh, it's crazy, man. Cecilia and I, <clears throat> we have, uh, I'm telling you, teacher life is so crazy, and it's no excuse, but... I'm just saying, you know, finally, I finally got a little bit of a week off. She doesn't really get too much time off, um, you know, preschool life. Uh, but it's like I've been enjoying this week, but in this week, I've been more busier than I've ever been because, well, I'm catching up on after 15 weeks of going, like, pretty much, you know, 15, 16 weeks um, of going straight here. Just going crazy and doing so much for school and working. And at one point, I had two jobs and all that. So it's like I've been catching up on so much. And I'm training, of course, and getting my body back, getting ready for <clears throat> getting ready for next season, all these things. It's just crazy how busy you get, you know, after you neglected all that, which, of course, you know, you're taking care of the biggest thing, of course, which is your 
job, you know, and everything, your career, but man, I've been super busy, and well, it's been also nice to spend time with my significant other, I'll tell you that, so yeah, Cecilia and I have been hanging out and enjoying it, staying up late as well, uh, she don't go until later in the day usually, so uh, to work. So we've been staying up, watching movies, and hanging out, and enjoying ourselves, and of course, Christmas shopping, we had to go grocery shopping, we had so much to go, and yesterday, I just, you know, woke up, I didn't even set my alarm, went to bed at like, probably like 12.31, not super, not super crazy late, you guys, but just saying, you know, I didn't set my alarm, and well, here I am, waking up at like 9 o'clock, and I'm like, Taryn, my bad, bro, and he's like, yeah, man, he's like, I'm cooking with my brother right now, uh, Pretty awesome that Justin's back down right now. We're going over to California. Uh, but, man, uh, yeah, and I'm like, oh, crap. We're going a little bit. He's like, I got some shopping to do. And I was like, oh, man, I'm sorry, Taryn. I'm like, how about tomorrow, dude? And, of course, man, the, 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 the trusty Taryn Rodriguez, man, is like, let's do it tomorrow. So I'm like, all right, brother. So, dude, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. And my apologies for yesterday, man. No <laughs> problem, Larry. It happens. Oh, it is crazy. It happens more than it should with me. So my apologies, brother. But I am glad to be here, man. Glad to be talking some football with you. So where we left off, we were just getting underway with the Myrtle Beach Bowl on Monday. We have the Potato Bowl on Tuesday as well as the Frisco Bowl. Uh, a result that you and I are, I'm pretty sure, both very pleased with. I know I am. Uh, on Wednesday, we had the Armed Forces Bowl, which was... It was a great game, but that ending, I mean, I just, man, that ending was awesome. So, uh, we got that. Then yesterday, the Gasparilla Bowl, as well as the Frisco Football Classic, and then, Taryn, today, scheduled for 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Hawaii Time. I don't know what they actually call it. Maybe it is Hawaii Time. I don't know. But... Three hours behind us was supposed to be the Hawaii Bowl, and unfortunately, due to COVID, just being a jerk and, you know, doing what it's doing to the rest of the world, messing it up, uh, yeah, no Hawaii Bowl, which sucks. We got back, we, we're getting back to bowl season tomorrow with the Kamiya Bowl, but unfortunately, no Hawaii Bowl today. Completely understood, but it just sucks. So, with that said, Darren, we are going to go ahead and jump on in. By the way, y'all, and I will not mess this up, let's hope not, but we are scheduled to be right back with you. Uh, we were going to go Monday, but, well, I don't think this is move to, to recap one game would be like, you know, wow. So, uh, we can do this right here on air, Darren, let all of our listeners know. Um... What you thinking, brother? You want to just go ahead and continue on, skip on Monday since we only have one game to recap, and uh, continue on, you know, one of these days next week, or uh, you, you, I don't know, what, what's you looking like? I'm down for whatever, man. I, I'm ready. To, I, whatever you want, I will cover college football with you regardless. See that, y'all? That's my boy, Taryn. Well, we'll talk about that, and we'll get that next show planned out for you. But with that said, y'all, we got some games to cover. And, well, Mr. Taryn, man, the Myrtle Beach Bowl on Monday. Um, It's funny. You know, we talked about that opening kickoff, much like the Stag Bowl, uh, <laughs> which I don't want to, you know, spend too much time on that poor Stag Bowl. But last Friday... We had the opening kickoff returned by North Central, and, well, that was one of the only bright points of that game. I mean, there was a few more, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, it just went the other way, and Mary Harden Baylor rolled. Well, Taryn, it looked kind of like that. <laughs> uh, the opening kickoff, uh, man, this is what a, what a job I think Old Dominion scored, if I'm not mistaken, but, uh, you know, it was a close, in the very beginning, as every football game is, it was close. And it wasn't like it was a blowout. But, man, uh, that's the last time Old Dominion saw the lead, man. So, <laughs> so with that said, Darren, let's get into this recap. For this. So, as I mentioned earlier, Lemurion, uh, Lemurion, I believe, James, will score 100 yards, man, returning the ball, taking it back. 
It wouldn't be long because right after that, the very next possession, or I guess, you know, defense get the ball back. I don't know how. Was, you know, pay attention, doing all kinds of crap, but also pay attention to bowl season. But it uh, looks like uh, Shamari Brooks with a one-yard run into the end zone. Zach Long with the extra point. With 13.03, it would be 7-7. Seven to seven. And, well, here we go again. They would. Um, that was the beginning of the fourth quarter. Tulsa would then, well, that was for Tulsa, by the way. Uh, and then Tulsa would score again close to, oh, nearly the, middle, the end of the first quarter. Well, first quarter, 14-7 Tulsa. And then it just goes from there. Second quarter, 17-10 Tulsa, halftime. Third quarter, end of the third, 23-10 to 10, Tulsa. And then in that fourth quarter, two touchdowns would be exchanged. However, Taryn coming up short. And really, I mean, you know, not it's not really garbage time. I mean, I mean, I guess you can call it that. But Tulsa did score first, so it was 30-10 to 10 at one point during this fourth quarter. Not too long after that, that was at 9.04, at 7.15 to go in the fourth quarter. This is when Old Dominion would score, and it would be 30-17. to But realistically, I mean, you know, the game was pretty much done. Um, I mean, there was still plenty of game to go, we know that, but Tulsa just looked like they had a stranglehold on this thing. They they played good, They, 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 they their defense didn't, you know, didn't allow nothing more, and well, there you have it. Final score on this thing, Tulsa, 30-17. to They'll finish off the season at 7-6, and six, and Old Dominion will finish off at 6-7. and seven. Overall, Taryn, what were your thoughts on this game? My overall thoughts was that <clears throat> Tulsa's offense really came alive in this game. Like, most of their players, or most of their offense was basically bounced, and three of their top players were in the century mark in terms of their receiving and passing yards as well as the rushing yards. So, all in all, I think Tulsa really woke up after that after that kickoff return touchdown. So, you have to respect what uh, they did. Uh, Old Dominion just couldn't keep up offensively, and that's not a recipe for success, especially in a bowl game. You can't really win with field goals. You have to win with pretty much touchdowns. So, I think... Once again, in that aspect, I think Tulsa just woke up, and you can't, they didn't, they weren't really fake. That's what I think. Dude. Yeah, and you bring up the century mark. Brooks, 26 for, 26 carries for 107 yards, one touchdown. Johnson, eight receptions for 129 yards, one touchdown. Bren, even, uh, you know, not the best passing rating, but still pretty solid, man. Um. Let's see here. Where was it at? I just clicked out of it, unfortunately. That was, wow. Okay, well, let me go ahead and get back to that. I wasn't uh, embarrassing at all. But okay, so getting back to that game, um, Brand, the quarterback, would throw for, uh, where is he at? 20, 22 for, 30, for 34. And 285 uh, yards and two touchdowns. So overall, man, good stuff. No, not a bad performance from Old Dominion, but nobody but that quarterback, of course, which you would think would always eclipse Century Mark, or at least close to it. I mean, you know. But uh, nobody else really went over the Century Mark, at least in their leaders here. And it was just it was just a tough game overall. Tulsa had everything locked up, and they played well, man. So congratulations to Tulsa winning this year's Myrtle Beach Bowl. Congratulations to them, man. Solid game and way to end off their season. So, on Tuesday, Taryn, there is a bowl game played on the Smurf turf that I just love the name. You know, I, I don't know about you, Taryn. I'm a potato guy. I like potatoes. I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But I really enjoy potatoes, Taryn. And it's funny because every time you hear Potato Bowl, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just funny because Idaho, of course, very famous for potatoes, so you'd only imagine that this name, and every year I just love it because it's like, you know, the Potato Bowl, it's it's, kind of, it's it's cool, you know, and me, I'm a French fry kind of guy, I'm a I'm a baked potato and steak kind of guy, Darren, I don't know, so it's just, it's just funny, I don't know, like, every year this this, this bowl, for, for some weird reason, because, you know, apparently I'm fat and like to eat uh, potatoes, um, you know, it just kind of stays with me. So, kind of funny, but uh, I'll tell you, man, this, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, 
this game is this it's usually a good one. And well, this year it was actually a pretty good one. So Taryn, with that said, man, are you are you a potato kind of guy? Yes, I am definitely a potato kind of guy, especially when I have potatoes with other things like hash browns and French fries and whatnot. Yeah, I am a I am that potato guy. Yeah. Brother, you're making me hungry. I mean, some hash browns, Taryn. It's mashed potatoes. Oh my goodness! I, you know what, man? Some ma- mashed potatoes can make pretty much any meal better. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm with you, Taryn. I'm with you. And right now, hash browns, man. It's 825 in the morning right now over here in California. And so, Cal, and man. <laughs> hash browns sound pretty good right now. But anyway, Taryn, before we, you know, get too hungry here on the show, um, the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, Wyoming versus Kent State. Dang, Taryn, I, I'll tell you, I really thought this game would be a little bit closer. Kent State wasn't too bad this year. They were. They actually played pretty solid. Wyoming, I know Mountain West, uh, you know, a bit better, a bit better of a, uh, a conference, and that is no freaking diss on the Mac. But I will say that Wyoming, man, they, they – okay, both teams offensively came out. Both teams came to play. Because even Wyoming's defense can't be the happiest giving up 38 points. But I will tell you, it was a good one, man. These teams went back and forth. Uh, Wyoming would strike first and then answered by two touchdowns from Kent State. Dude, that's actually, you know, some some fire exchange right there, you know. And, and that, that's a good competitive football game. When you see that in the very beginning, you're like, oh, man, well, this this could end up being a good one. And, and, and it was. So at the end of the first quarter, 14-7, Kent State leads this thing. At halftime, 24-21, my favorite score, Taryn, uh, Kent State would actually lead this thing into the third quarter. And this is, I think, the major turning point. Well, I think it was the major turning point because Wyoming would own the third quarter. It's always something about that third quarter sometimes where teams just come out after halftime and they're like, hey, we're going to win this football game. And, well, as we've been seeing in some of these bowl games uh, and actually some of these championships as well, man, uh, <laughs> This has been the case this year. Or I'm not seeing we've seen it before, Taryn, but two touchdowns scored here by Wyoming, and actually three touchdowns unanswered, because they would even score one at the beginning of the fourth. Kent State would finally score another one. But uh that was answered by ten more Wyoming points and with two fifty four to go in the game, Tulsa would score a touchdown. However, it was just no bueno. Was in vain, basically. I hate to say it, but fifty-two to to, to uh, thirty-eight at that point in the game. And I think they tried the onside. I remember watching this, and uh, it just you know wasn't to be. And Wyoming, man, they got it done, dude. So the Pokes, the Wyoming Cowboys, um, these guys would freaking make it happen. And look at these numbers too. Actually, amazing, man. Williams, sixteen carries. For 200 yards. Yeah. Uh, that is my, like, wow. That That is my favorite stat of the game. I'm a runner. I'm a runner. I love running the ball. I'm on that old school type guy. And, and, man, what a freaking score. I mean, what a what a great job by this young man. Also, four touchdowns on the day for him. Uh, Nair, I believe, as well. He didn't get the sanctuary mark, but he had five receptions. Little little nickel dime um, receptions, I'm sure, for 87 yards, one touchdown. And on top of that, dude, I didn't even realize this right now. Levi Williams is a gosh damn freshman. Okay, number one. On top of that, six foot five, 224 pounds, out of Canyon Lake, Texas. He's a freshman, homeboy. <laughs> he is a freshman. He went nine for 11. As you can see, they ran the ball a lot. Nine for 11. He threw for 127 yards and one touchdown. But, you know, Terrence, it's not every day that a quarterback rushes for more than he throws. 200 yards, 16 carries, four touchdowns. My goodness, man. Wyoming, how about this, Terrence? Yeah, and the thing about both teams is that they did not make one turnover. Neither team turned the ball over once. The funny thing about this game is that Kent State actually had more total yards than Wyoming. They had 656 total yards to Wyoming's 531. And it's rather more surprising that Wyoming ran the ball more and they were successful in the ground game compared to their passing game, whereas Kent State basically had a balanced 
Giants offensively, but couldn't win. The thing that did kill Kent State was their penalties. They had 12 penalties going for 95 yards. That was kind of what hurt them and their chances. But you have to give credit to Wyoming. They really showed up, and I think the ground game might have taken the wind out of Kent State's sails. But it was a great game, and I could tell it was high scoring because there were no turnovers, and basically the total yards made it a slugfest offensively. Yeah, man, look at the time of possession as well. 31 minutes for Wyoming and 28, basically 29 minutes for Kent State. This was a very evened out possession game. It's just, yeah, man, I mean, mistakes and those freaking penalties, man. So tough go for those guys. But, yeah, man, Wyoming, what a job. And Levi Williams, man, as a freshman, you know, I'm just saying, there's a quarterback a couple of years ago that uh, came out of Wyoming Remember his name, Taryn? Uh, he he went on and played in the NFL somewhere. He has a pretty. He came out with a wild arm, but he actually is pretty good on the ground. What's that guy's name again, Taryn? I forgot. What, what what's his name? Uh, I believe his name is Josh Allen, and he plays for the Buffalo Bills. That's right, that guy, Josh Allen. You know the one that we're all raving about on three and out. The guy that could, you know, that has cleaned up that arm a little bit and who's actually taking this Bills team into overdrive and having them compete with the juggernaut Patriots. That guy. Well, let's, let's not forget, Taryn. He played here. And, well, they got themselves a pretty big freshman coming in right now doing big things. And, well, no. <laughs> we might be talking about him in a few years on 3 and out, Taryn. So, with that said, man, um, Awesome stuff there. Congratulations to Wyoming. So, all right, Taryn. The microphone might as well just get given to you. Okay, I'm a big San Diego State guy. Of course, I love all SoCal teams. I'm, of course, USC first. Um, and even, you know, even UCLA when I have to. <laughs> when I'm, I'll cheer them on versus other states and everything. But, you know, definitely not against USC. Anyway, Taryn, uh, we won't go there. But, um, anyway, with that said, number 24, San Diego State. Now, as I mentioned earlier, for those of you who don't know, which I don't know how you don't, if you're a big IE Sports Radio fan, or if this is your first time listening to the show, or being, you know, listening to some, uh, to, uh, to IE Sports Radio, Taryn, of course, does run the SoCal Supreme Sports Show here on IE Sports Radio, and I'll tell you what, this gentleman here gets into everything. He, we're talking freaking everything. He, Toreros, um... We talk tridents, yeah. That's us. That's the that's the USD and um, what do you call it? Uh, US. Uh, sorry, UCSD. I mean, yeah. Uh, Darren gets into everything. All right, Pepperdine. I mean, it's all everything you can think about, man. Awesome stuff here. Darren covers it because, well, he's just that good. <laughs> so he knows a thing or two about San Diego State. And, well, this year, San Diego State, I think, frustrated Derek more than any other school besides USC. Because, let's just face it, we were very frustrated with USC. Well, we both were. But, um, yeah, this this school was very frustrating. And it's just funny hearing Taryn talk about San Diego State because you can hear the frustration. Um, but, Taryn, the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl, man, got underway on Tuesday. First quarter, San Diego State just, you know, think it's cool to trail at the first quarter. However, it's just the first quarter, so don't get crazy, Larry B. But 14-7, to UTSA will lead. Uh, into the second quarter, San Diego State, it would be all Aztecs, Leading 17 to 14 after scoring 10 points, a touchdown to field goal. Into the the uh, into the half, 17 14, San Diego State. Well, a couple touchdowns will be exchanged and one field goal for UTSA. 31 to 24 heading into the fourth quarter. Still a very close football game. And Taryn, a fourth quarter that was very defensive except for. One touchdown with 9.51 to go in the game. Lucas Johnson for a two-yard carry into the end zone. And Matt Orezia. Orezia, I don't know what picture his name. You know, I guess they I'm sorry. I guess I stopped doing that. But 38. I guess I stopped saying I want to butcher the name and then butcher it. 
or stop picturing it first and then saying that, sorry. But anyway, 38-24 is what the score would be with 9.51 to go in the game. And what happened, Taryn? Well, that would be the final score. 38-24 uh, to 24 overall. And some good numbers here. I'll let you get into all that good stuff, man. Like I said, you can take it away. But the solid performance by the Aztecs. But I want to know, would Mr. Taryn actually be pleased with this performance? Or are you still kind of angry? Taryn, take it away. <laughs> I was actually pleased with the performance after the first quarter. I said that San Diego State put 31 points in the second half, but it was the, after the first quarter they put up 31 points. So I thought it was a great game by San Diego State. I think it took them a little while to get it going. I think they just ran the ball a little too much at the beginning. And the thing that San Diego State did – all in all, was that they had a balanced diet offensively. They had a they run. They obviously ran the ball a million times, but they eventually they eventually got Lucas Johnson involved. He was able to play a solid game, and honestly, I think it was a. I was pleased with this performance, especially with losing a tough game last week. I think San Diego State definitely lived up to its reputation, albeit they did have a couple, two losses that were basically ugly, but all in all for San Diego State, it was a very relatively clean game. I don't know if, I, I'm, I'm wondering if San Diego State will have this success next season. They do get lucky something from Cathedral Catholic down the street as he is a top running back in California, and he is committed to San Diego State. So we'll have to see what San Diego State can do next season. I'm sure they can vie for a Mountain West Conference championship, but it's all about having a balanced diet. It's not, they cannot just run the ball more than passing the ball and vice versa. Well, Darren, you said it best, man. This offense... <laughs> I remember you commenting on this offense as being so unpredictable in a horrible way. And, well, Taryn, you know, I'm with you. I was actually pretty pleased, too. And, and trust me, y'all, they are number 24 in the country. They finished at 12-4 and four in the season. You know, good game, good season Aztecs. But I totally get Taryn's frustrations because, Taryn, the potential on this team is madness, isn't it? Like, their potential is, is unreal. They have potential to be, like, much better than where they are now. It's just... A lot of just, I don't know, man, this inconsistency, is just, it's bothersome, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. And it can be very frustrating when it comes to when it comes to them making mistakes and coming up big in big games. Like the Fresno State one that could have that <sighs> basically derailed their perfect season was definitely not the prettiest game. And we, we definitely don't want to get into the Mountain West Conference Championship game. That one was just dead on ugly. Yeah, SDSU has had a, <laughs> they've had their licks this year, but well, overall, man, that's really cool about that kid from um, Cathedral Catholic as well, that's awesome, man, so with that said, Darren, solid performance, though, uh, for the Aztecs, I mean, time of possession, the ball basically lived on, on the Aztec side with 37.51, so almost 38 minutes, and they kept the ball out of UTSA's paws. Or um, Talons, I guess, the Roadrunners. So, um, 22 minutes, pretty much, for UTSA total offense, offense possession. But, yeah, man, Johnson, 24 for 36, 333 yards, three touchdowns. Bell, 26 carries for 101 yards, eclipsing the century mark with the one touchdown. And then Matthews, one reception. 175 yards, two touchdowns. Solid performance, man. And this guy, well, the, well, this whole entire team, something to be proud of and a way to stamp it off. And by the way, UTSA had a pretty good year as well, 12-2. and two. Um, All the best to these two teams moving forward for next year. And, well, that will do it for this bowl season for them. Next up, we had a game on Wednesday, Taryn, and uh, Cillian and I were grocery shopping during this one. But, I, you know, awesome Hulu TV. I, if you don't have Hulu TV, you uh, it is awesome. They have all kinds of cool stuff on there. <laughs> but I really, I love it. And, of course, I get to walk around with my ESPN and my football games on. So, uh, you know, great stuff. But, Darren, man, wow. Uh, 
I, I don't know if you got a chance to watch this one, brother. I know it was in the night or, you know, a little bit later. But, man, what a football game. Mizzou versus Army. You know, we know Army this year has had a good season. And then at the very end, they lose the game that means everything to them. And that, of course, is the Army-Navy game. And uh, tough loss. Tough loss. Um, to the... Uh, well, for the for the Black Knights, man, the midshipmen would win that game. Big time rivalry game there. It's huge. However, the Black Knights wouldn't let that phase them, and they went in full freaking force in the Armed Forces Bowl to take on Mizzou. And man, what a freaking game this was! But a way to end off for these seniors, man. I mean, bummer for Mizzou, but just a huge, huge victory for the Black Knights. And here's how it goes. All right, so. In the first quarter, uh, we would end off 10-0 Mizzou. I'm just going to be real with you, Taryn. You know, I, I don't want to diss the service academies. They're awesome. The Air Force for a while, about 10 years ago, was pretty freaking solid. Um, Navy, they were good. I mean, I remember when I started watching college football like in the 2000s, they were the one that owned this rivalry against the Army. And then Army, out of nowhere, got solid again. And, well, Navy's kind of, you know, not as solid right now. And I'll tell you, dude. This was crazy, uh, seeing the Army, though. I, I, you know, I, I thought to myself, eh, Mizzou, they're SEC. I remember saying it on the show, too. And, eh, they're probably going to win this game. Well, Army had something else in mind. Army would come back and fight. However, in the second quarter, or at the half, that is, uh, Mizzou would still lead seven, uh, 16 to 7. In the third quarter... Sometimes we get weirdo third quarters, as I mentioned, where they come back and get crazy or scoreless, or third quarters are so unpredictable, man. <laughs> but what happens? Army will come out and score, and wouldn't you know it, dude, freaking Army looks like here, uh, that somehow, some way, they get two more points. So I guess it's the, uh, I don't know where this came from. I really don't. But. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm looking at Mizzou's points. But Army would make it a two-point game, Taryn, 16-14 to 14 in this third quarter. Then on into the fourth, this is where it gets crazy. Tyre Taylor, which I hope I'm saying his name right, will hit Brandon Walters for a 14-yard pass into the end zone. Cole Taley with the extra point. Army takes their first lead of the football game, man. As they will jump up twenty-one to sixteen with ten twenty-eight to go. Then we get on in to Mizzou saying, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, sorry, enjoy that lead for a little bit." But there's one minute eleven seconds to go, and Mizzou gets on in, and Brady Cook will hit Kiki Chisholm for a six-yard pass into the end zone. Two-point conversion would fail, however, but it's a one-point football game. 21, 22 to 21. Now, Army <laughs> would march, and that young man, Cole Taylor, he would be a hero on Wednesday night as they would kick one from 41 yards as time expires in Taron. The Army Black Knights will earn. A victory in the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. Congratulations to this football team, Taryn, knocking off Mizzou 24 to 22. How about that, man? The impressive thing about Army's win was that they actually had their third string quarterback lead the way oh. in the final drive. Their starting quarterback actually got hurt in the third quarter as. Tahir Tyler was able to come in, and he eventually threw a 13 or 14 yard touchdown pass. And eventually, on the final drive, Army just trusted Jabari Laws, and Jabari Laws decided to turn into Lamar Jackson in all the <laughs> final drive because he managed to rip off a big game, which eventually went down to the Missouri 35. And honestly, that Missouri defense was a little questionable, if you ask me. I just didn't believe it. In Missouri's defense, they did not have their starting running back, Tyler Batty, as he is going to the NFL draft, and he was held out by his coach. And then also, 
their starting quarterback, Connor Bazalak, was sidelined because of leg injury. So, all in all for Missouri, it was kind of the case of they didn't have X and Y players, but Army didn't have A, B, and C players. So, the fact that Army was able to complete that final drive with a third-string quarterback was quite astounding. It really was, Taryn. I did not know that their third string quarterback. Oh my gosh. That makes this one even more special, man. I mean, look at them. I think it's amazing. Looks like Anderson, their starter, uh, looks like he went thir- three for four for 60 yards. So Buchanan, 21 carries, 68 yards, one touchdown. Robinson, one reception for 42 yards. Taryn, it looks like these guys didn't even play that much. I mean, it's crazy. I think it was a total team effort, I'm sure. You look at the, the other stats, and I guarantee you it all groups up to be one big victory. But, yeah, man, time possession, 31 minutes for the Army, 29 minutes for Mizzou. I mean, dude, it's a two-minute change of time of possession. I mean, you look at these stats, and um, you look at things like turnovers. Only Mizzou only had one. <clears throat> clean. It was a fumble. But clean game for the most part when it comes to that. Penalties, eh, they're going to happen. But Mizzou, 5 for 40 yards, and Army, 4 for 35 yards. So, I mean, if you think about it, Taren, this is a pretty clean game. But just Army got the better, man. So what a job by them. And the Black Knights can cap it off with a with a nice bowl victory, man, in the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. So getting on to yesterday, Taryn. <laughs> man, all right. Two football games that we were going to pick on air. Unfortunately, we didn't. But we did pick in the messenger yesterday. And I will not try to retract on my picks because, man, I did not see one. I saw one coming. I did. Kind of. But dang it. I just wouldn't. My my SEC bias, which sucks that I have to even have to have that thing. But it pulled me one way because, well, SEC is usually the most NFL ready. But I don't know, Darren. I don't know, man. I'm not sure about that anymore. Some of these SEC teams, they're, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. Nothing to the conference, but I don't know. So, starting things off, man. Yesterday, we had the Frisco Football Classic presented by Ryan. And, dude, what a What a game. What a football game. Like, seriously, I really enjoyed this thing. I was walking it on and off and doing stuff and moving around, and I was at the gym for a little bit, and this was a good football game. Jaren actually didn't watch the video at the gym, but I came back home and checked it out. I checked it out, and it was a good football game. So, into the first quarter, 10-0. Miami of Ohio would lead this thing. Into the third quarter, or sorry, second quarter, 20-14. Miami of Ohio would lead this thing. The mean green was definitely in this thing, but it just didn't seem like they were in it. I don't know. Like That's a dumb thing to say. Sorry, but let me retract. I don't know. Miami of Ohio, they, they, they owned these the first half. Definitely the second half. But it's just, I don't know. This defense, I guess, is a little too strong. Uh, for Miami of Ohio, but at the half, Darren, 20 to 14. The final score of this game was 27 to 14. So you already know this is my kind of football game, at least in the second half. Scoreless for the most part, one touchdown in that third quarter, early in the third quarter, too, and the rest of this game was all defense. Nobody would score uh, after that point, and well, that's the final score in this one 27 14. And Miami of Ohio came out with a nice victory, finishing 7-6 and six in the season. The mean green of North Texas finishing 6-7. and seven. But, man, uh, just, just what a performance here from Miami of Ohio. And just what a, what a game. Just a tale of two halves. And I don't know, man. It's just kind of crazy. Miami of, Ohio, Miami of Ohio looked like they were much better than a 7-6 and six football team, at least after watching this game. So what are your thoughts on this one, Terry? Well, for starters, I think the turning point in this game came in the second quarter where Miami of Ohio got not one, but two interceptions as North Texas led 14-13, and then three-play drive for North Texas results in an interception Miami of Ohio cashes it in for a touchdown eventually. 
Then the next drive, 10 play drive, North Texas caps it off with another interception. So other than than most of the mistakes, it was mistake free, but still, that was kind of the turning point right there. I think that was what broke North Texas, in my opinion. And Miami of Ohio played a great game, and I they deserve to win. And they mainly ran the ball, which isn't really a great recipe for success. But honestly, they were efficient for the most part. Actually, actually let me retract that. Miami of Ohio had the, a balanced offense. They ran the ball as well as passed the ball efficiently, and they definitely deserved the win. North Texas just could not keep up with them after those interceptions. So, all in all, you have to give it up for the Miami defense just because that defense did pitch a shutout, and it was looking like it was going to be a nail-biter until the second half occurred, and Miami just played chess while North Texas played checkers. Classic. <laughs> and I, down were also key as well. Oh, uh, brother, turnovers. You said it here. Two turnovers for... Uh, for the mean green, Miami thirty eight minutes on that with that ball that that's a major difference. Only twenty one minutes really for the mean green twenty two if you round it up. But I'll tell you, brother, uh, this was just a yeah. Miami came out and played, man. Gabbert Brett Gabbert looked pretty good. Twenty two for thirty one, two hundred twenty eight yards, two touchdowns. Tracy almost getting to the century mark. Fourteen yards. 92 yards, uh, sorry, 14 carries, 92 yards, one touchdown, and Sorensen, seven receptions for 116 yards. Overall, man, Miami looks strong, they look good, and um, hats off to this team, man. All the best for next year, and good game. Now, time to get into the weird. I do need to make note of, I'm sorry to cut you off there, but uh, um, third downs were also key. North Texas was was only five for 13 on third downs, so... I think that also hurts them, and penalties also hurts them as well. As they usually do. And uh, certainly a crazy one there, man. That third down, 100%, man. So, Taryn. <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday was a game that I think everybody's going to remember from ball season. If you're a real college football fan, or at least if you, you know, follow the sport close enough. UCF a couple years ago deemed themselves the national champions because, well, they went undefeated and they didn't get a chance to call a football playoff because, well, you know the biases. We understand, okay, who they play, power of whatever, blah, 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 blah. Can we get a freaking 16 or 24 team tournament? Seriously, it's annoying that we don't have that. Anyway, UCF yesterday just said, well, screw it. We're not tip-top, but... We're going to freaking win. You know, we're going to make some things happen. Florida hasn't had the best year. We get it. They're not Alabama. They're not the the, the Florida team of 2007. Okay, we we get that. We, we, We totally get that. But what I will say is that UCF came to play some football, man. This was a good game in the Union Home Mortgage Gasper Bowl. And, dude, what a football game. Florida comes out and scores. Okay, it's nearly scoreless first quarter, but Florida would score at the very tail end of this first quarter, uh, 7-0 Florida at the end of the first. However, the second quarter was full of some, well, fireworks and some good defense. Florida actually would lead this thing 10-9 to heading into the half. Into the third quarter, we would see a little bit of a tide change here as UCF would eat Clips. They would come. I'm telling you, that third freaking quarter for some, some reason sometimes. But UCF comes out and gives it to a man. They scored 17 points. Now, they weren't unanswered. However, they would score 17 points in that third quarter. Florida managed to get seven. However, 26 to 17 heading into the fourth quarter. And, well, one more field goal. Nearly a nearly scoreless fourth quarter. Uh, and, well, as it was in the first quarter, and one field goal to add to the total, and 29-17 to 17 would be the final score. That was with 2.41 to go. Daniel Obarski would score a 33-yard field goal. But, dude, there it is, man. UCF 
29-17, to 17, knocking off the Florida Gators. Now, like I said, once again, they get, we get it. This isn't the big, beefy, powerful Florida Gators that we knew a couple you know, decades back, but or basically like two decades ago, or a decade and a half, whatever you want to call it. But, <clears throat> Darren, wow. Uh, Jones, six, 14 for 36, not the, not the best. Day. Oh, sorry, oh, that, that's, that's, that's Florida, sorry, my bad. Um, Keen, 14 for 22, not bad. Uh, 144 yards, one touchdown. Bowser, 35 carries, 155 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. And O'Keefe, man, seven receptions, 85 yards, one touchdown. You know what, man? Congratulations. UCF played this football game, and they guess, I think they just outplayed Florida, man. Just what, what a way to end off their season. How about this game, Darren? The first ever win over Florida for UCF, and it couldn't have come at a better time. For UCF, their run game really dominated the Gators. As you talked about Ryan O'Keefe, he had a double-triple as he had triple digits in rushing yards. And, oh, no, he he, 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 was, he just barely fell short of the receiving yards. So my apologies. But he did have a touchdown in the receiving yards department. But he had over 100 receiving yards. So I don't know what his future looks like. He's a wide receiver. But if he could, he could be a Debo Samuel type of player. So... That is very impressive by Ryan O'Keefe. Isaiah Bowser had himself a game with two tutties and 155 yards, and he really performed well when it came to the ground game. And even when UCF didn't want to throw the ball a whole lot, they were still efficient. So I think for UCF, this was a big win for them, beating a crosstown rival. Florida has a lot of questions it wants to answer. It has to answer, like, are they going to be relevant again? Did penalties really kick them in in the butt? And was their offense efficient enough? I don't think their offense was efficient enough to take down this temp, a very good UCF team. I thought that UCF just came ready to play in this game. And it's disappointing for Florida because, as you said, they're an SEC type of team and they're supposed to represent the conference well, but instead they they did not, and they just had an overall ugly season which featured them losing to Florida State. So we'll see what the future holds for Florida. Actually, they barely beat Florida State, but still, they also lost to Missouri. Yeah, man, Florida, Florida had a rough year, man. <laughs> they they, they had lost to South Carolina. Oh my goodness! They they need to they need to recharge, man. Poor kid. They need some Gatorade. I'm just kidding. But yeah, th- this team needs to needs to <laughs> they need to, to gab. Yeah, forget about this year and put it in the rear view and move forward. And but man, what a tough year for them. But you see, yeah, that's awesome, man. First time they ever beat Florida. <clears throat> that is amazing. And congratulations to them. And yeah, I guess what a what a what a game, man. And uh, as you mentioned, penalties, dude. Oh my gosh, yeah, the penalties here. Yeah, UCF four for forty two, but pretty much doubling that. The Gators, man, eight for eight, eight for eighty five. I mean, ouch! Just, just what a you know. And then time possession too. I mean, thirty five minutes basically for uh, for UCF and basically twenty five for Florida. You, know, you you see this, and of course, you know you can see who controlled the game and. Just what a what a victory though for these guys and well there you have it man so that ended off last that that's pretty much where we are we're now caught up with ball season Taryn and well today this bums me out man um Cecilia and I were hanging out last night and enjoying our nice little dinner and talking to the family and getting last minute eyes dotted and t's crossed and. Uh, talk about plans for Christmas and everything, and he's hanging out, we're getting ready to watch, um, we watched Home Alone 1 and 2 the other day, and last night we watched Home Alone 3, I know there's a Home Alone 4, so we might watch that, I don't know, but we, uh, you know, we, we enjoyed it, we're enjoying our time, and we go lay in bed, getting ready to turn in for the night, and Taryn, I happen to just look at Twitter, and I see the viable canceled, and I'm like, what? Or Hawaii pulls out of the Bible. And I was like, what the heck, man? So I look, and yeah, uh, 
yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's real, and it sucks, and I don't like it, but freaking COVID. So, <clears throat> with that said, the game, the uh, Easy Post of IE Bowl was set to be played today on Christmas Eve at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Hawaii time, and unfortunately, Taryn, no football game. So, it sucked. I, I couldn't stand it. it. It bothers me. I'm so sad about this because, you know, it it's just... It's one last hurrah. And for somebody who says, oh, bowl games don't matter, they don't matter. You know what? Yeah, maybe for those who aren't are going to go to the NFL, yeah, okay, maybe it's not worth it to play in games like this. You know, Taryn, but at the end of the day, let's just be real. A lot of these guys aren't going. It's like, you know, 1% of high school players go to the NFL. It may be a little bit bigger for the for the um, NCAA, like Division One, But, dude, there's 126, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I'd be more now. I don't know, but um, Division One single A programs. Taryn, you watch the the combine just like I do. We watch it together, of course, every year. You know, you watch it, I watch it, and we, you know, have shows on it and everything. There's only like 200 some guys, like 300 some guys, and only like 200 and some get drafted. I mean, Taryn, it's a very small percentage of guys who actually even get to the NFL. And then once you get there, I mean, as they always say, I mean, it's a different story, but the NFL stands for not for long because you look at some of these guys' careers and a successful career is like, if you can last four years and through one contract, you've made it because this is so competitive and it's just hard, man. The NFL is just, it, any professional sport, man, if you can stay there, you know, you hear about those guys that, Taryn, we, we never even heard of in, in other sports because they never make it out of the minors. You know, when it comes to certain sports, I mean, especially baseball. I heard guys playing their whole career in the minors, so I've heard of that before. So, Taryn, the professionals are not easy. And these bowl games, these last hoorahs, they're special, man. They are. Maybe some of these guys, you know, a lot, all, all these guys aren't going to the pros. But gosh dang it, they're, um, they're excited. They're excited to, to play one more time in their colors. To go out there and play one more time with their brothers. And unfortunately, things like this happen. And it sucks. So I'm going to read this real quick from ESPN uh, under the news for Hawaii. And it says here, uh, it is written by ESPN senior writer Andrea Adelson. It was released <laughs> released on uh, yesterday, I believe, at 7.23 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hawaii Ramble Warriors <clears throat> out of Hawaii Bowl due to COVID-19 issues. And this is just a crusher, man. <clears throat> so, try to get through this really quick here, but I do want to read her whole article. Uh, so, the easy point in Hawaii Bowl was canceled after Hawaii announced Thursday that it was pulling out of the game, citing COVID-19 issues within the program in addition to injuries and transfers. The game was scheduled to be played Friday in Honolulu. The health and safety of our student athletes is the most important part of this decision, Hawaii Athletic Director David Martin said in a statement. The the recent surge in COVID nineteen cases has forced us to not participate in the game. We are disappointed for our players, coaches, and fans. ESPN and the Easy Post Hawaii Bowl staff did everything they could for us, and we appreciate their valiant effort throughout the week. We want to thank the Memphis Tigers, for making the long trip to Hawaii. We are disappointed we can't compete on the football field. Memphis coach Silver uh, Silverfield, or Ryan Silverfield, expressed disappointment as well. We hope the Hawaii players and staff get healthy soon. <clears throat> he said, oh, sorry, that's right. Sorry, um, we hope that Hawaii players and staff get healthy soon. He said in a statement, I'm upset for our seniors and the rest of the team that battled this season to earn this opportunity. We had a terrific time here in Hawaii as a program, and we are sad our trip ended this way. Hawaii joins Texas A&M as teams unable to compete in bowls this season as a result of COVID-19 issues. While we are disappointed that the bowl will not be played despite considerable efforts from our many stakeholders, sponsors, supporters, and volunteers who worked tirelessly to make this game a reality, ESPN said in a statement. 
we thank the University of Memphis proud, I'm oh, sorry, program, and its fans for making this long trip, and we hope they were able to enjoy the unique experience that this event offers in the Aloha State. Taryn, that hurts, man. That sucks. I mean, Memphis and their really cool uniforms. You know me, I ranted and rave about their uniform. But, <clears throat> I'm sorry, man, I gotta clear my throat. <laughs> you know, for a little something here. But, Taryn, that's, that's a blow, man. That sucks, and I hate that stupid COVID, man. Oh, my gosh, it's ruining everything. And, and it's just, here we go again. Great, and, of course, we talked about, we haven't even talked about Texas A&M. Of course, that's a good time to just bring it up. But Texas A&M is actually out of the, of course, I know you know this, Taryn, but to our listeners out there, they are out, or who don't know, or who do know, but they're out of the tax layer bowl. You know, they decided to pull out COVID issues. I think they just, they, they're just undermanned, uh, unfortunately, and I'm not sure, you know, but what goes into that decision, of course, is maybe the scare of the of COVID outbreak. I don't know, but I do know they did pull out for New Year's Eve, and Rutgers is now filling that spot to take on Wake Forest in the tax layer Gator Bowl. Uh, but Darren, dude, <clears throat> it sucks, man. Hawaii out of this game. Um, Memphis was there ready to compete. And it says also due to injuries and transfers. Uh, look, this is just my guess on it. And there's nothing official that I read or anything. But COVID probably pulled out some players. We've seen COVID wreak its havoc on the NFL recently with postponing games the Tuesday and you know, ruining the Browns for sure on Saturday. I'm a very proud Raider fan because at least we got a freaking victory. But let's be real, we barely beat a bunch of teams with, with backups, you know. So if the Browns would have had all their starters, I don't think the Raiders would have won that game. But you can see that, you know, <clears throat> COVID is freaking stupid. I mean, you know, it's – what a jerk. <laughs> you know, I hate this. I really hate this, man. Like, it sucks and – Unfortunately, due to injuries, I'm sure they had some guys out, and then maybe some transfers. Players are like, eh, well, I'm not playing. I'm transferring on the way out. You know, it sucks, man, and I hate that. I'm so angry that this has to happen, but it, it, it is what it is, Terrence. So um, what, what do you think, brother? How, how, how are you feeling, man? What, what do you think about this uh, this whole thing going on and, and the Hawaii pulling out? I understand that the Hawaii Bowl has to have Hawaii in it, but can't, it can't just get, like, Someone else. I mean, I know it's tradition, but it still sucks. The good thing for Memphis is, is that they'll get a nice a trip to they'll get a trip to Hawaii where they could just relax and maybe just enjoy the island and whatnot. So that is probably the only positive that can come out of it. But all in all, it is disappointing. I would like to see someone else like take Hawaii's place, even though it was tradition, or just rename. Rename that bowl, like maybe have it called the Bluff City Classic Bowl, and have Memphis host it. Like I know that doesn't sound fair, but the fact that they had to go all the way to Hawaii only to find out that it's canceled, it's kind of saddening, which sucks because the seniors unfortunately don't get a chance to play. So we'll have, we'll hopefully, we gotta hope that everything gets better soon, and that we gotta stay safe, y'all, and just. Do what your part slow the spread. Yeah, Taryn, I, I am so bummed to hear that. And you're right, man. I see, so, Okay, so <clears throat> I personally, I mean, I didn't know that. I mean, is that really how it's supposed to be, Taryn? Does Hawaii have to play in this game? Because the New Mexico Bowl, I, I don't see UNM, the Lobos, ho- hosting um, the New Mexico Bowl or New Mexico State at the Aggies. I don't see UNLV hosting the Las Vegas Bowl. And I definitely, definitely didn't see UCLA or USC freaking playing in the L.A. Bowl. So it's like, you know, I mean, seriously, does Hawaii have to play in this game, Darren? No, they don't. So. <laughs> okay, well, I was just like, I didn't know. I seriously didn't know. Like, I was like, wow, do they have to also? But you're right. You know, they can get somebody else. Rutgers jumped up real fast. You know how many of these teams that played under that underachieved this year or unfortunately just didn't get a chance that didn't qualify or, you know? I mean, come on, man. You know, you're right. Fill, have somebody fill in. Fly them in last minute. I know it's like one day, and I know it's a lot, but come on, man. I'm just, I'm disappointed. I really am, and this sucks. It's like you couldn't get somebody last minute to come out and play. I'll tell you what, Darren. I mean, some of these kids probably went home for Christmas break and everything like that, but 
I'm just saying, man. I mean, last minute, it's very, very, very hard. But maybe they did throw their hook in the water, man. Maybe they did try to reach out. I don't know. But it, it's and I know it was last minute. And like I said, we're already in Christmas break. So I, I understand. But just a bummer. And, and it really sucks that it happened. So I'm guessing that's exactly what happened, too, because I didn't realize that's how late it was. Uh, you know, we're getting close to Christmas here. But with that said, bro, that's... Uh, Bummer, and that's what happened for today. So, no Hawaii Bowl, and well, we are on to Christmas Day. So, real quick, Tim, we have reached our hour here. We're going to go a little bit over today as we've been. So, coming up tomorrow, we do have the Kamiya Bowl, which Georgia State will take on Ball State. We do have, on Monday... Uh, the Quick Lane Western, the Quick Lane Bowl, Western Michigan versus Nevada, and the Military Bowl, Boston College versus East Carolina. We also have on Tuesday the Birmingham Bowl, number twenty, Houston will take on Auburn. <clears throat> the First Responder Bowl, where Air Force will take on Louisville. Liberty, the Liberty Bowl, will miss, will, where Mississippi State will take on Texas Tech. And, man, we have the Holiday Bowl, where UCLA will take on number 18, NC State. And the Guaranteed Rate Bowl, where West Virginia will take on Minnesota. So, Darren, um, I guess, you know, we could do a little recap, probably a shorter show of one of these days. I know we said that last time, but this is, you know, you get us talking football, uh, college football. But how about this, man? We talked, we'll, we'll be talking the Camille the Bowl and the quick lane, and the military recap. But if you're down, man, I'm down for a early morning Tuesday show on the 28th to recap those three games and get us ready for the one, two, three, four, five games on Tuesday. And then it's craziness from there on out, you guys. Uh, Wednesday, the 29th, we have SMU in Virginia in the Fenway Bowl, the Pinstripe Bowl. Kind of funny because I can only guess that Fenway is going to be played in Fenway. Pinstripe Bowl, we know where that's at, Yankee Stadium. Taryn, the Yankees and the Red Sox hate each other so much that it's going, it bleeds into bowl season of the NCAA. They're on the same day. <laughs> They're competing too there. So Maryland and Virginia Tech. Then we have the Cheez Bowl, number 19, Clemson taking on Iowa State. And the Alamo Bowl, number 14, Oregon versus number 16, Oklahoma. And then we just continue on into New Year's Eve Eve. And then, of course, the college football playoffs. So we'll talk about all that uh, coming up in our times and we'll, we'll recap and all that. But, Taryn, how's that, how's that, man? The next time we meet up will be uh, 7 or 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. Actually, either of those work out for me. But, uh, yeah, man, how, how does that work out for you on the 28th to recap these these three games over the weekend and get you ready for and get everybody ready for this big sprint coming up this next week. Tuesday at seven or eight is perfect. Let's do it, Taryn. All right, y'all. Well, there you have it, man. So, Taryn, let's talk about these games real quick coming up and get a little prediction in. Come here, Bowl. Georgia State versus Ball State. Well, Christmas Day, man. The only game we got eleven a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Two. Oh, sorry, eleven thirty. A.M. Pacific Standard Time, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And Georgia State, he's ready to take on Ball State. Georgia State 7-5 and five this year. Ball State at 6-6. Six and six. Uh, Georgia State's actually favored by 5.5 points. Pretty solid football teams, both of them. I mean, they're pretty evenly matched. Uh, Taryn, who are you taking in this one and why? I'm taking Georgia State just because they're the hotter team in terms of win, in terms of win streaks. They've won three in a row. They've won four of their last five. I was going to take Ball State first, but I think Georgia State and its overall offense is going to be too much for Ball State to handle. So give me Georgia State. Yeah, me too. I see a victory here over Coast Carolina, which is not an easy team to beat. So, yeah, man, I mean, I'm not saying that Ball State didn't have any big wins, but, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also go Georgia State in this game, man. Looks like a pretty solid game here and should be a good one. So that's Christmas Day. Make sure to get ready for that one tomorrow. Then off to Monday, Darren, we have the Quick Lane Bowl, the 7-5 and five Broncos of Western Michigan take on the Wolfpack of Nevada at 8 and 4 this season in the Quick Lane Bowl, Western Michigan is actually favored by 7 points. Who are you taking them? Uh, this one's a difficult one. Mm -hmm. I want to pick Nevada, but I think Western Michigan gets it done. I think they just barely get it done. 
once again, I think their overall offense will, their run game was very potent, and I think that could be the difference right there. Most of that has a plan to stop that. So I think for me, West Michigan and its balanced offense was promising. Yeah, this is a this is a toughie, man. Imagine this. I I don't know. That that's tough because it's crazy. Western Michigan. I don't know where. I mean, the team who won more games. They you know, but Nevada has one more game, but they're still favoring West. I'm wondering what this is. You look at this quarterback though, for strong on the year. He has four thousand forty, almost forty two hundred yards. Uh, he has thrown eight interceptions. But overall, man, I don't know. The run game looks stronger for Western Michigan, though. Um, oh, this is a close one. Ah, oh, man. Um, eh, whatever, Taryn. Let, 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 let's be rivals in this game, man. I'm going to go with the Wolfpack. <laughs> let's do, let's see, right, man. Second time we disagree. Second time, man. This is, I'm just doing this for the sake of us just having fun, not, play, not picking the same teams. But who knows, man. I'm going to go underdog in that one. All right, Taryn. Military Bowl presented. Uh, sorry, the Military Bowl presented by Paratron, Paratron, I believe. Boston College comes in at six and six. Now this should be a fun game because, of course, we have our IE Sports Radio accounts going head to head here. Of course, Title Town Sports and uh, the Carolina Cast. But Boston College comes in at six and six. East Carolina comes in at 7 and 5 and BC is favored man by 3 points but the pirates uh, this is a 3 point game apparently man this is actually this looks like a very evenly matched football game oh this is a close one Darren how about this one so this one could basically come down to the wire here i'm actually going to take ECU to win this one because something about that Boston College offense looks a little off just because they they utilize two quarterbacks, and it kind of makes me think that their starting quarterback got hurt early in the season, and then mm-hmm. they have to roll with Dennis Gluckle, a senior. I kind of trust the Eastern East Carolina offense. I think ECU has had it has taken its lumps here and there, and despite them not being Cincinnati, they kind of hung with them. So I'm going to take East Carolina. Yeah, Taryn, you brought up the injury, and I remember Beantown Brandon was so happy. I forgot who the actual starter was who got hurt earlier in the season, but I know he was just crushed because he was like, "Man, like we, we we're gonna have a good season." I guess, I, but you know, I mean, I, and, I, and I hate to like not, I hate to like abandon them and be like, "No, well, you know, like, but but, dude, that injury is significant." I'm not saying the backup hasn't done his job or their rotating backups or whatever haven't done their job, but. I, I got to go ECU in this one as well. Um, I feel like they'll probably get it done. And, and hats off to the Pirates, man. Good stuff there. Let's see if they can get it done here. And, um, yeah, we're both picking them. So, all right, Terry. Well, the next time you and me will talk some college football, brother, a, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, or 8, uh, sorry, uh, let's say 8 a.m. Pacific Center time on Tuesday, December 28th. And, well, we'll be previewing, we'll be recapping those games and previewing the Birmingham Bowl the First Responder Bowl, the Liberty Bowl, the Holiday Bowl, and the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. And like I said, we just roll from there, you guys. We've got a whole bunch more games, and they come in the thick. So that'll be pretty much the thick of bowl season we're getting into. But, uh, yeah, man, we will talk about all that. Of course, our next dates where we get into everything and all that. I know we have a sub-schedule already, but we can move things around, and who knows. Um, But with that said, brother, that is that. And, well, here we are. So... Um. Oh, those famous lines, they're fun, but they go a little something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, cue the music, because we're out of here! Alright, Mr. Terrorigas, brother, where can all these stars find you, man? You can find me on Twitter, at Terrorigas1. You can also find me on Twitter, at set underscore You can find me on Ladies and gentlemen, he's the man. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> for my boy Sarah, man, for me, your boy Larry, make sure to follow me on Twitter at the E-E-O-Score LV5. Remember, Hall of Fun, oh, the Hall of Fame show is on today, you guys. 
2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, getting ready and set, because, well, we'll be showcasing those in the Hall of Fame vote in the Elite Eight, of course. I always forget Taryn, of course. He, uh, I don't forget, but he is an active member of the Hall of Fame, of course. He, uh, in the last year, class 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, four more will make it. That voting poll will go up today at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And, well, there you have it. Make sure to follow our sponsors at SoCal Warriors, of course. Show our, our a big up to our sponsors, SoCal Warriors, the SoCal Warriors, and, of course, the Battle Town Tech International. I got to start getting that review out there. Sorry, man. I won't do it at the very beginning of the show. But big ups to our sponsors. Make sure to follow us all as a whole at iSports Radio on Twitter. And on Instagram at iSports Radio. And of course, check out our website, iSports Radio. Check us out on Facebook or iSportsRadio.com. Check out our Facebook, www.iSportsRadio.com. And well, there you have it, y'all. Have a Merry Christmas! We will see you Tuesday. Take care, y'all. Until then, <clears throat> take care. And as always, God bless. <laughs>